Are you ready to perform at your highest potential? Thank you for joining this GP Strategies webinar, where we'll explore best practices and innovative insights to help you and your organization improve performance. So let's get this going. I'm going to start and say hello and welcome again to everyone who's joining our discussion on inclusive behaviors with our presenters, Nick Gervin and uh, Nancy Joyce. Um, my name's Kim Heyer with GP Strategies, and I'm really happy to be your host for today's session. So before we get started and I introduce our lovely ladies today, I want to just let everyone know and remind you that a link to the recording will be provided in a follow-up email within the next 24 hours after the session. So as always, if you are new to us, even though everyone's lines are muted, we always want our time together to be as interactive as possible. So we really do encourage you to contribute during today's webinar. Uh, so if you have comments during the presentation, use the chat to engage with our presenters and our um, attendees, your fellow attendees as well. Um, you can enter questions in there, but really if you do have any specific questions for our presenters, if you can add them to the Q&A section, that way we can filter them out and make sure that we get them answered um, by the end of today's webinar. So again, I want to thank you for joining today's session, and I'm really excited to introduce you to our presenters today. Our first presenter is Nick Garvin. She uh, currently serves as the Director of Learning and Delivery for GP Strategies she, with an impressive global track record spanning over two decades in learning and organizational development. She doesn't look old enough. Um, Nick skillfully merges her deep knowledge of adult learning theory and general psychology to craft groundbreaking and inspirational interventions geared towards fostering cultural shifts and transforming working environments. And we also have the lovely Nancy Joyce. She is the Global Account Director for GP Strategies DEI Division. Uh, she's passionate. She's a passionate advocate for diversity and inclusion in workplace and has worked directly in the space for over seven years. Prior to focusing on diversity and inclusion, she ran sales and marketing teams where she was an active supporter on diversity and inclusion agenda. So again, we do have a really great session planned for today. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to your presenters. Have a great session, ladies. Thank you so much, Kim. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Everyone I saw through the um, chats, one, one individual calling in from Cambodia. I think they probably win the prize. So welcome to you from Phnom Penh. One of the things that we have, what has emerged in our research uh, recently is that there's really a disconnect between employees and leadership in our current reality in the business world. So research shows that only 50% of employees currently trust their organization. If you think about our parents, grandparents, great-grandparents' generations, how they trusted their companies and how much that has changed, um, the result is that there's a lot more turnover. Uh, people, you know, look for jobs while they have a job because they're afraid. And uh, they may not put forth the full effort that they could because they're not sure that we would do the same for them as their organization. So that's something we really need to address. Most workers as well also think, interestingly enough, that leadership and management believes that the organization is healthier from a mental health perspective than it actually is. So there's this disconnect between what leadership and management think, yeah, which is a pretty good place to work, and what the reality is for the workers themselves, the employees themselves. And uh, I read recently as well that um, Gen Y individuals really look at how inclusive an organization is before they join, uh, which is very different, again, from how we thought of things when we were entering the workplace as, as you know, my generation or people older uh, older than me. So um, it's, a, it's a reality we have to address. And one of the ways that we at GP Strategies Leadership and DEI teams are addressing it is by really breaking down for individuals how they can become more inclusive through behaviors. And that's what we're here to talk about today. When we look at trends in the training space, the four most popular trends at the moment are communication skills, change management, coaching for performance improvement, and teamwork and collaboration. Obviously, very critical topics. 
However, even if you got great at those four things, you wouldn't be done. There would be some gaps in your skill set. Uh, some of the emerging topics are a little broader, a little more comprehensive. And we think that inclusive leadership behaviors falls into this category. So things like agile leadership, emotional intelligence, remote leadership. So remote working is here to stay. I know there are many companies trying to push people back into the office, but um, even with that, there's still more remote workers than there ever have been prior to COVID in the history of our working lives. Um, new leader fundamentals, and then diversity, equity, and inclusion as part of leadership. And that's where we as an organization fall. There's no such thing as a leader or an inclusive leader. Every leader should be an inclusive leader. It should be part of leadership training. And um, it gets really, really um, important that people walk the talk. I just saw a raised hand. Did somebody, somebody want to come off mute and say something? Reha, I believe. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. So interestingly enough, as part of being an inclusive leader, uh, one of the things that we think is really important is to be authentic. And it turns out Merriam Webster thought that this was the word of the year, authenticity, which we think is awesome. Um, being authentic is critical on several fronts. One is when you are authentic, you give your team permission to be authentic as well. That means they can be vulnerable with you. They can tell you what they're afraid of. They'll come to you if they have concerns about safety of a product. Oh, thank you, Rajan. Yes. Safety of a product or um, readiness for a rollout. So we're looking forward to having 2024 also be the year of authenticity. And um, we're going to help you figure out how to make it the year of authenticity at your organization as well. Finally, for me, inclusion at work isn't just a one and done deal. It's a living, breathing journey that needs everyone on board from the intern to the CEO. Um, we used to, you know, back in the day, we were like, let's do an unconscious bias training. and um, and everything will be okay. And we know now that that's obviously not the truth. This is a journey. It's an evolution. And it needs to include everyone from the CEO on down. Now, it's okay for your DNI team, your HR team to be um, shepherds of that evolution, but they can't own it on their own. It has to be owned by everyone. So in the chat, I'd like you to just give me some insight into, give us some insight into to what degree you think your entire organization is involved in the inclusion discussion. I'd love to see what you think. Any responses? To what degree is your entire organization? 10 to 20% says someone, okay. So we have a little work to do there. Anyone else? To what degree is your entire organization? It's hard to say. It's a huge organization and it differs by line of business. Okay. 50%. The will is there, but not followed by actions. Yeah, not uh, unusual, unfortunately. So we need to really prioritize taking action, which this, um, this session will do. I think my organization is pretty engaged throughout. Excellent. Good. We can only build on that. Uh, our leadership is a great example. They are invested in IND, which helps, but there is still work to be done with the enterprise as a whole. Of course, I think there always will be. Wow, 10% in my organization, not a priority for execs. That's tough, very challenging. Okay, so one of the things that we think um, this session will do for your leaders and managers is give them a concrete roadmap to walk the talk which then um, provides a roadmap for others as well. And so the whole organization then begins to be more inclusive. Uh, and um, now I'm going to, I believe, turn it over. Oh, poll question, excuse me, forgot the poll question. So to what extent does your leadership understand what inclusive leadership is? So if you could answer this poll for us, 
not at all, somewhat, well, or very well. Excellent. Still got some, some more people to answer. If you could all um, participate, we would really appreciate it. Good, getting there. Excellent. A few more and we'll be right there. To what extent do your leaders understand what inclusive leadership is? Okay. I think we're pretty close there, Kim. So Kim is gonna share the poll result, the results with us. So yep. it'll be very interesting to see. Um, can you all see the poll results right now? I've shared them, Nancy. They should be. Okay, okay great. Um, so not surprisingly, the winner here is somewhat. So 57% of you said that uh, your leaders somewhat understand what inclusive leadership is. And I think that's pretty, pretty common. You know, these days it's hard to be a leader and not have been exposed to concepts around inclusion, but whether or not they actually own them and embody them is a different story. Not at all, just one person. So that's good. At least we've got progress overall in the organization. It's not good for that individual, obviously. And if you want help to brainstorm how to get them on board, please let us know. We'd be happy to help with that. 32% um, of you thought that, uh, that your leaders understood it well, which is excellent, but there's room for improvement. And 8% of you said very well. So congratulations. That's that's um very heartening to hear and should make your job more pleasant and, and a little easier. Great. So now that we have a sense of where we all are in terms of the inclusion journey with our leaders, I'm going to hand it over to my wonderful colleague, Nick Gervin, who I admire so much and who is one of the main architects behind our inclusive leadership behaviors solution. And she's going to take you through what it is. Thank you so much, Nancy. And thank you all for your engagement so far. I think what we're experiencing from your chat comments, from your poll answers, is that we would love inclusive leadership to be that natural connection um, that it just becomes, well, that's just how you do it. But not everybody understands how to make that happen. And our inclusive behaviours is something we're so incredibly proud about because this is giving you that roadmap, exactly as Nancy said. It's giving you something to measure performance against. So before I start talking about what they are, which trust me, I cannot wait to do, um, I am just going to tell you a little bit about the journey that we've been on as we've been creating them. Because our inclusive behaviour framework um, actually started life about 10 years ago initially, um, when we started to do the research and we started to think about what inclusion looks like in organisations. And at the time that we launched these inclusive behaviours, we were focusing very much on what the leaders do, what the, the HR department do, what the L&D team do, how it's brought to life. But it was kind of stuck in that sort of middle layer. What it wasn't doing is addressing everything throughout the whole organization. And quite rightly, our, our clients, uh, they, they picked us up on that and they said, yeah, but how is it owned? across the whole organization. We've already had answers in the chat about these are big organizations. It can't just fall on the shoulder of a few. So what we did was we went back to the drawing board. We went back to our research. We added tons more research, not only from our own experiences and our clients, but what the thought leaders are saying out there in the industry as well. And the beautiful thing that we have created now are easy to remember inclusive behaviors that help inclusion become the norm so that we can stop labeling it as a DEI effort. It's just, this is the way we are. This is the way it's done. I'm a super visual person. I love having things out in front of me. And so when I talk about our inclusive behaviors, one of the things um, that I visualize, and you'll see it on screen right now, is this sort of 3D puzzle. Um, because I think we'll all admit behaviors are a puzzle. Sometimes the pieces go together and sometimes they just don't connect at all. Um, but I like to think that when we're talking about our behaviors, it's made up of all these different assets that connect together. Some, you can connect yours naturally and you go, do you know what? These are the pieces of who I am. 
Others, maybe you've collected a jigsaw piece along the way, or there's a new one that you need to add into the picture. A little bit harder to fit in. Maybe you need a bit more of a conscious effort. That's okay, because this is where we take people on the journey. Now, I cannot wait any longer to reveal the behaviours to you. So I'm going to just flip the screen so that you can see what our six behaviours are. Now, I'm going to start off with authenticity, because as Nancy's already said, and as so many people have said last year, one of the topics, one of the hot trends for leadership right now is authentic leadership. We're not looking for mechanical managers. We're not looking for the constant cheerleaders. We're looking for the humans. We want the humans to lead us, especially in a time of AI. It's all about the people and how we connect. So when we're talking about inclusive behavior, an individual contributor, an executive member, a middle manager, we've all got the responsibility to be authentic, to live by our values, to be who we say we are. And that's demonstrated throughout the organization. If I jump to the left-hand side list of our behaviors, the next one that I dive into is of course empathy. Because inclusion cannot happen unless you are seeing the whole person in front of you, understanding their reality, understanding what's important to them, where their struggles are, where their value is, what it is to live their life. So having that understanding of empathy. But I don't want to just stop at empathy because, like I said, we're a connection of lots of pieces. I'm going to jump to cultural curiosity. I love the fact that it's cultural curiosity and not cultural competence. The word competence suggests that, you know, we can achieve it. We can tick it off and say, yes, I am now culturally competent. Well done, me. Cultural curiosity, though, is more about that constant learning the constant seeking of additional information. Talking to one person about their experience isn't the same as talking to 50. It isn't about, it isn't the same as hearing podcasts or doing your research. It's understanding, again, the whole person in front of you. What's happened in their world that shaped them today? What experiences are influencing their behavior when you're working with them? Taking the under time, taking the time to get culturally curious is an absolute essential ingredient when we're talking about inclusive behavior. And then of course, there's collaboration. None of us can be an island. None of us can achieve everything on our own. We all have gaps and you know what, that's okay. It's how we use the brilliant brains around us because that's what leadership's about. It's about connecting people who are better than you in the regions that you need to deliver on. So collaboration is about bringing all of those quirks, all of those insights, all of those ideas into the same arena and exploring that with people. So these on the left-hand side, I love the fact that they layer. They layer as you go along your inclusion journey but I don't wanna miss what's on the right-hand side because these are the key four foundations that everything circles around. Humility, being humble, recognizing that you're gonna do things wrong. There are gonna be days where you say the wrong thing or you took the wrong approach. It's okay. It's about learning from that, becoming better the next time, having your eyes open to something that you didn't know yesterday. It's okay. Being humble and keeping that with us means that we're seeing the value in everybody else's additions. And of course, you can only have that humble ability. You can only have the empathy and the authenticity aspects if you are self-aware. Some of us, we like to think that's really easy. Others, we may question it. Self-awareness is a journey. It's a skill that you have to grow and it's in a behavior you need to invest in. So all of the inclusive um, behavior framework hinges on the ability to understand your blind spots. How we think we are compared to how we really are can differ. So how do we get people understanding these behaviors and demonstrating them in the live environment? Well, no surprises, we take them on a full learning journey. It starts off with your own self-assessment. 
we take these six behaviors and we break them out into demonstrable practices that you can assess yourself against on a light heart scale. Is this something I do regularly? Is this something I'm not so great at at all? Once you've completed your self-assessment, it goes to become a 360 assessment. And this is where you get the feedback from your managers, from your colleagues, from your direct reports, from your clients, from those who work closely with you. Because what you think you do all the time may not be demonstrated um, or experienced in the same view. Now, the beautiful thing about our inclusive behaviours journey is that you get the self-assessment you invite the 360 feedback. And then because every client has their own digital area created within our sphere, the user just goes in, downloads the report literally at the click of a button. It is that simple. And then you have a comprehensive report that not only tells you what the behaviors are, it tells you what people are experiencing from you, how your performance is currently scored, what level you're currently at across these regions. But because this is an in-depth report and because it's a 360 experience, which not everybody is used to doing, um, we do recommend that you um, add in some feedback sessions to go through that feedback in that safe space. Understand the outliers, understand what people are saying, understand the, the, the differences between your self-awareness and what others have marked you as. Now, I know that this can be a costly experience for some. So if you can't do that, We've come up with a, a contingency and that's okay. We've come up with an e-learning experience that will take you through the project. It will tell you what to look out for. It will take you uh, through the report pages, through the behaviors. So you still got that great learning and that flipped classroom experience. When you finally get to the instructor-led workshop, that's where the magic really comes alive. Whether you're doing virtually or in person, it's very practically focused. We're not going to spend time in this aspect of, of the learning going through what the behaviours are or what it means or what it looks like. We're going to go through what's your reality? What's the impact that you're having on others right now? What is the rest of the culture experiencing within the work, working organisation? And it is so practically focused that it's not about the theory. It's not about the nice to have model. It's about the measurement. It's about the ownership and it's about every single level making a difference to how we're going to be. And of course, because of that, it needs to be bigger than just that instructor led experience. We include an action plan and that action plan is what's measured. It's what's embedded and it's how it lives within your organization going forward. So it is a journey. Um, the bit that I just want to explore a little bit um, in more detail is around the report because what you can see on the screen right now are just a few snatched, snatched pages. Um, you can see the example of how the behaviours are presented. Now the top bit is the bit that I just mentioned, the how are, how are your results really showing? What is it that we're, we're telling from you? The bit that I love though and the real value in this report against all others is the development actions. We are not giving you development actions that are the same across the board. Your individual contributors will not get the same development actions as your middle managers, as your directors. Because the beautiful thing is, is at the point that you did your self-assessment, we asked you about your role. So all of these recommendations are relevant to you. They are things that you can go out and demonstrate tomorrow. Start them to become a conscious effort. And of course, that's where your measurement is going to come in as well. As I mentioned, it is very practically focused. So I couldn't miss the opportunity to point out that at the back of the report is the um, page where you can map your actions. And I'd love for the management to get into this conversation so that you have this partnered, supportive, safe way to get these behaviours into the workplace. So that's the journey. They're the behaviours. I'm now going to hand over to Nancy so that she can just do that three approach recap. Great. <clears throat> so thank you so much, Nick. As Nick mentioned, we do have uh, three solutions that align with our in, uh, inclusive behavior solution. And so we have two instructor led solutions, one in person, always very compelling and one virtual instructor led. Now the agenda is the same, but the virtual instructor led is two 90 minute sessions because you just can't be on the 
Zoom call or whatever that long. But in both sessions, they take people through the behaviors in detail. They talk about the definitions, but also the actions that ladder up to each behavior. And then they go through everybody's report. And so people not only learn from the facilitator, but then they learn from each other. So if I am uh, rated very highly on collaboration, but lower on cultural curiosity, then um, I will share what I do to be collaborative. And I would ask you to share what you do to be culturally curious. Um, and we learn from each other. And then we build an action plan and we have a um, buddy system and a peer review system so that we keep each other honest. Now, the other option we have, is, as Nick alluded to, is our digital solution. Now, what I love about this is that, first of all, it would be affordable to do the entire organization. And if you do the entire organization, self-leaders all the way up to C-suite, then everybody is speaking the same language around what it means to be inclusive as an employee. What are the behaviors? And you can then those behaviors and, the, and discussing those behaviors becomes part of the common vernacular of the organization, which really helps it become embedded. The digital solution is a 30 to 45 minute e-learning. It does go through the 360 and the self-assessment and um, also ends with goal setting for behavioral change. So, and also a very um, interesting and effective approach. So if you are interested, we will um, actually, Kim just put in the chat, a place where you can actually take the assessment and get your own report. So you can see it's um, in the chat and we would love you all to do that, to participate and see what it's like to get your own report. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us at any time to talk about it. Um, we would love to hear your feedback and your questions um, so that we can start a discussion about whether this really will help you advance your inclusion agenda at your organization. Thank you, Nancy and Nick. We do have some questions coming in. I know we're at the time, uh, the end of our time, but I think it would be great if you would take a few minutes just to answer them for our guests. Sure. Okay. I, okay. There is a question um, that came in about, can you share some examples of specific observable behaviors aligned with the components of the framework? Um, they're just curious to what that looks like. I know we covered it a little bit, but I don't know if you have any more to add. Sure. So when you're thinking about the, the practical application, again, do you remember how I, I said it was at different for different levels? But if we were to say um, a team leader taking into account the um, let's go with collaboration, collaboration, team leader. We've linked it to Nancy um, saying about how remote and virtual teams are working. One of the aspects that we'd expect to see is setting up the meeting in a way that everybody can respond. Are you thinking about the people who don't like to be on camera? Are you thinking about the people who won't naturally speak um, out first? Are you um, offering things like text entries and, and um, activities where they can prime themselves with the agenda before they attend? These are really practical applications and they're relevant to the activity that you're doing. Okay, great. Um, there is another question that came in. Sorry, I'm multitasking. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, someone asks, how does it fit into the larger DE leadership path? And does it? Love that. Nancy, do you want to answer or shall I dive in? Why don't you dive in and I'll add if there's more to add. Oh, go for that. So um, this is beautiful because if you have got something like a future leader program, that is the, the first stage of thinking about who I'm going to be as a leader. And of course, as Nancy said, it shouldn't be about being a leader or being an inclusive leader. You set this out at the beginning as one of the aspects. That works. Um, you can do it as part of an existing leadership cohort. So if you're focusing on leadership skills, if you're going to be talking about how to lead people, how to manage people, there is no more natural plug than to put in and how are you going to do that inclusively so having the inclusive behavior model layer those practical requirements of leadership so that it just becomes another component same as way as it would delegation or time management yeah and there's actually you know the business case is very compelling i don't know if you you most of you have probably seen <clears throat> excuse me the 2023 report that mckinsey did on inclusion but 
you know, companies who are able to leverage inclusion to achieve more diversity at the top can be up to 39% more likely to have increased profits than those who don't. So it's it's very compelling from a financial perspective to implement inclusion initiatives like this. Great. Um, there is one, uh, two more questions. So one is, how long does it take to see results? <laughs> I can go, I can do that. So um, obviously, we hope that you see results right away. Um, but I do think pe people are initially hesitant. They have to commit. It's like learning a language. You have to, com to com uh, commit to actually doing it. You know, like people who are afraid to make mistakes um, when they speak a language don't learn how to speak. So you have to encourage people to try out the behaviors and uh, to be prepared that they won't get it 100% right the first time around. But <clears throat> over time, they will get better at it. And they will also demonstrate a growth mindset for their teams, which is excellent. Um, and so, you know, I think you start to see some shifts after about three months. And then um, really within about a year, you should be able to see, as long as you're doing all the right follow-up activities, some um, changes on your employee engagement um, survey. Great. Um, one more, um, just to finish us up. So this is a really good one. How how do you measure the implementation of the sessions? Like how do you measure them? Nick, you want me to take it or do you want to do it? You dive in and I'll add. Okay, great. So <clears throat> we measure a couple different ways. One is we obviously do surveys at the end of the sessions, um, like most training sessions do. With some clients who want to dig deeper, we then do another survey at three months in order to see um, how people um, self-assess that they've changed their behaviors and what the impact has been. Um, and then we also encourage our clients to actually keep the group that goes through the inclusive leadership behaviors piece as a cohort so that when you look at your employee engagement survey results, you can see if, number one, they are rated differently as a manager as a result, and number two, whether or not their employees um, demonstrate increased satisfaction, lower turnover, higher engagement, et cetera. And we can you know, help you figure that out if you need help with that. Absolutely. And don't forget the fact that whatever route they've gone down, they've created an action plan. And that action plan is so practical that you can own it as their manager, you can own it as their buddy, you know, having it as, as a question in your quarterly conversation, what have you done to change your behavior since then? That's a really easy way to keep it front of mind and make it measurable uh, within what you're already doing. Great. Uh, ladies, we are above time, but I feel like I have to first thank you for this great just like discussion. And I also want to thank everyone for joining us today for your time and attention. At the end of the session, we do ask that you take a minute to fill out our survey because your feedback is important to us. Um, we do have other questions coming in, but we'll make sure that in follow-up emails, you will get your answers to you. So again, we thank you all and hope you'll join us again for another one of our upcoming webinars. Be sure to visit GP Strategies website to view our future sessions. And I want to wish everyone on the call a wonderful and productive rest of your day. Again, thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Nick, uh, and everyone, you, everyone else. Have a wonderful rest of your day or evening, depending on where you are. Thanks, everyone. Speak to you soon. This webinar was brought to you by GP Strategies. Together, we help organizations transform through their people. You can access more webinars or download additional resources by visiting the GP Strategies resource library. The link is on your screen and in the description.